Summer brings a rash of humorous T-shirts. But although most of them come and go, some of them have been around for years and become unrecognised classics. Now, there are classic albums, there are classic books, there's even classic cola. But surely it's about time certain T-shirts achieve the status they deserve. Now, the problem is that most of the best-loved T-shirts you can happily wear down any British high street, we can't show you because they're too rude. In fact, if T-shirts were subject to the same rules as television, you wouldn't be able to go out in them till nine o'clock. <laughs> Most humorous T-shirts are about sex, drink, drugs, or all three. For example, the witty, work is the curse of the drinking classes, <laughs> which ought to be witty, it's by Oscar Wilde. The great thing would be to go up to the sort of bloke who'd be wearing that T-shirt in a bar in Ibiza and say, are you familiar with the great fin de siècle wit and playwright? and see how long it took before you got punched in the face. <laughs> now, here's a classic T-shirt. This one's been around since the early 70s. I like the Pope, the Pope smokes dope. <laughs> now, I think it's extremely unlikely the Pope does any such thing, but I don't think that's the point. What this is based on is the fact that Pope rhymes with dope. It could equally well be, I like the Pope, the Pope uses soap. <laughs> on a rope. See, loads of these T-shirts use the cannabis theme, including the eight million of them based on the world's worst pun, Addy Hash. Now, the great thing about all these T-shirts is that wearing one is the most surefire way of showing that you have never so much as seen a Class A drug in your life. You can stroll through customs at Heathrow with a million quids worth of substances in your underpants, but if you're wearing an Addy Hash T-shirt, they'll say, nope, he's harmless. Bad taste, of course, features big in T-shirt land. Here's a classic. Adolf Hitler, European Tour, 1939-45. to <laughs> Horrid, but historically accurate. In fact, the government are thinking of saving a bit of money by setting that T-shirt for History GCSE. <laughs> Talking of harmless, there used to be a T-shirt you could order from the back of Disco 45 magazine. Too thick for university. <laughs> Some T-shirts, though, operate on a more intellectual plane altogether. Take this one. I'm not bald, it's a solar panel for a sex machine. <laughs> Now, the breadth of cultural reference here is considering you've got to read this as somebody brushes past you on the pavement. You've got to be familiar with the work of James Brown and the principle of renewable energy, and you have to assume that a sex machine is always powered by electricity rather than being gas or steam-driven or using some form of clockwork. And given all this background information, you can work out the true message, i.e., I'm bald. <laughs> Scientists have recently developed a way of working out the exact age of a human male. It is called the trouser theory. The trouser theory. Which runs that the absolute determinant of the age of any man is the height of the waistband on his trousers. You see, it's like <laughs> the rings on a tree trunk. Because in youth or in your teens, your waistband is generally roughly where it should be. It's around the, around waist. the waist. But <laughs> as you get older, as you get into your 20s, through your 20s, you're tend to, you know, shift your waistband down a bit because you're getting a bit of a belly, right? There's a bit of a belly developing there, a bit of a beer belly, and down go the trousers. They start to go down, down they go, they're forced down, down go the belly. <laughs> down they go. Especially if you're a plumber, I've noticed. I don't know why that should be, but by the time you're in sort of mid-30s, they're practically around the knees. But then, something really strange happens. As you get into late middle age and towards your old age, the trousers slowly but starting, they start to creep back up again because your belly's gone now, but so is your bum. You go up and you get past the time of age until you're 70 or 80 and they're up around your chest somewhere. And you start to think to yourself, oh, no, if I ever make it to 100, I'm going to have to live in my trousers. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a very, very strange phenomenon. <laughs> Very strange and very painful. <laughs> Old age begins the first time you catch yourself saying, Oh, that's very dear. My oh, goodness me, that's dear. Beyond a certain age, everything is very dear. <laughs> Look at that, it's a general prize. You see these? They're very dear. Everything, even if it's really good value. Oh, wow. Have you seen it? Look, five course meal you can get here for £2.50. Oh, that's very dear. It's a terrible price. You might be able to afford it, huh, Gun? <laughs> older people always criticise younger people just for having things they didn't. The older generation are extremely suspicious of computer games. You have reached the gates of Mutron, where there are four paths, one of which leads to the dungeon of the Snarred Beast. <laughs> Actually, the teenage market for computer games is completely saturated now. So if they want to sell more games, they're going to have to broaden their age appeal to include the untapped market of the over 65s. Hence the introduction 
of the Saga Mega Drive, a new computer console for the older player featuring Chronic the Hedgehog <laughs> and Super Mario Shopping Cart. My dad's buying a Ferrari. Really? Yes, one, um, one dead giveaway for the teenage male is a tendency to gross exaggeration. According to official research, about 50% of teenage boys claim to have taken cannabis. And um, at my school, yes, it was about 50%. But then again, about 40% claimed to have been propositioned by Debbie Harry after Blondie played Croydon Fairfield Hall, and a quarter claimed to have slept with the school librarian. So, um, what sort of uh, Ferrari is it then? Oh, it's a really good one. Yeah? It's a Ferrari Estate. <laughs> yes, the confused hormones of teenage years are only further confused by school sex education films. At my school, we had a film called Boy to Man, which was mostly about spots, and in which the only people who actually got to do it were drawings. Now, fortunately, we had a rather more enlightened young biology teacher who brought us in a different sex education film, Emmanuel III. <laughs> which we enjoyed rather more, although we did all grow up convinced that you could only have sex in a large wicker chair. <laughs> <laughs> From teens to twenties, and if you're lucky, the world of work. Of course, some jobs will burn you out by the time you're thirty. Sell at two four three. Consolidated Allied are going long. Buy at sixteen and a half. Euro bonds at 23.8. OK, sell at 25. We've got Incorporated Consolidated at 103. Buy at 98. 14,000 Deutsche Bundes bonds for 12 and a half pence. Oh, that's very dear. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the wicker chair, though. <laughs>